across the still of the शांति इन मधुबन वे स्टार्ट आर डेज अर्ली एंड सो वी गेट एक्स्ट्रा माइलेज फ्रॉम एनी वन डे आई नोटिस दैट मेनी ऑफ यू वर देयर फॉर द वेरी अर्ली मॉर्निंग सेशन एट फोर ओ क्लॉक आई एम श्योर दैट those who went there will also want to be there tomorrow but how are you feeling now not too tired no fresh energized <laughs> good some of you have been practicing meditation already but today is an opportunity to go deeper into the subject because even after people have been meditating for many years they will all agree that they want to deepen their own meditation so it's a subject which is infinite you can take it as deeper and deeper and deeper as you wish and so the subject of inner peace and inner power is absolutely connected with the inner being and the power of silence and the power of yoga yoga meaning not the exercises but the union the connection with the divine and we use the term raj yoga union with the highest with the supreme as soon as i begin to turn my attention inwards and i learn that thoughts are my creation do you agree yes thoughts are not coming to me from outside the stimulus is coming from outside but it's me that's generating thoughts it's not the things out there which is why a hundred plus people hear the same talk and witness the same situation but the way a hundred people report that situation afterwards is in a hundred different ways <laughs> because our perception our awareness our understanding our vision everything is different and so the stimulus can be the same but our thoughts very much depend on our own inner being and our own personality that's a fact and so once i understand that thoughts are my creation it's a liberating experience it's the door opening to freedom because it means then that i can choose which particular thoughts i would like to have but also connected very much with thoughts are feelings is that right yeah whatever is the pattern of my thinking the pattern of my thoughts 
so will be the quality of my feelings. And so good thoughts and then good feelings both go together. But good thoughts and then suddenly something happens and there's another type of reaction and my feelings also change. And I look back and I think, well, I was feeling fine. I was feeling good. And yet, what is it that happened that took away that feeling good factor? It was that my thoughts changed. But thoughts can move very quickly. One minute here, the next moment here, at any one moment, a dozen different directions. So thoughts keep shifting. But feelings don't shift so quickly. The thinking that I've had, the thoughts that I've had, create a pattern, and that pattern creates a feeling. And the situation's changed, the quality of my thoughts has changed, but the feelings have been imprinted within myself. And so very, very important to be able to know that I can be the master of my own thoughts and I can also be the master of my own feelings. And what we're doing in meditation is learning to use our mind, our thoughts, in the right direction. Positive, pure, powerful, elevated, noble. And if we create those thoughts in meditation, then the feelings we experience in meditation are accordingly pure, powerful, elevated, noble. But after the meditation, what happens then? Well, hopefully, the training that you've given your mind to keep your thoughts on an elevated level will continue later on also. Which is why we describe this also as karma yoga. Even as I engage in action, in interaction with others, to keep my thoughts on that level of truth and positivity that I had during meditation. I'll give you a simple example, very basic. In meditation, I'm coming to the awareness of the inner being, the soul. And I won't take the time to explain that the soul is here because I'm assuming you know that anyway. But I'm creating the thought in meditation, who am I? I am a point of light in the center of the forehead. And I'm not just creating a thought, but I'm holding that thought until it becomes a feeling. So that I begin to feel detached from this bones and flesh body and begin to feel I am a being of light. And when I begin to feel this, it's not just that I am a being of light, I also connect with the original qualities that are within I, the being of light. Yesterday we spoke about the original goodness of the inner being. Let me remind you of the original qualities of the soul. Peace, love, truth, happiness, purity. These are the original constituents of the soul. Just as you know about the constituents of the body, protein, carbohydrate, water and air, etc. These qualities are the constituents of the soul. And when I focus my attention inwards in meditation, I connect with these qualities. But after my meditation, I begin my life of responsibility and action, or not even responsibility, 
for just action. When you leave this room and you go out there, it's not a specific responsibility that you have, you're free. But you'll be engaging in action, you'll be walking, you'll be talking, you'll be moving, you'll be drinking, you'll be eating, whatever, whatever. But through all of those activities, to maintain this awareness, I, the soul, am looking through these eyes. I, the soul, am speaking through these lips. And if you keep that awareness, then that is what we call karma yoga. Yoga, the higher awareness, the awareness of the self and the divine, but also karma. Simple things, complicated things, whatever the karma may be. But to check, what is the consciousness with which I do this? And the consciousness with which I do any type of action will determine the result of that action. It's not just the action itself. It's the consciousness behind the action that determines the quality of the result. And so meditation means being in this highest awareness, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long you can manage, and gradually increasing that time. But also, through the day, then revealing what it is you have experienced in the silence. And if in silence I've been on this inner journey and I've experienced the peace within, because the original state of being of the self is peace. And if I've experienced that, then that is what I will express in my actions later. Think about how the original state of water is cool, but you can heat it up artificially and it will get very, very, very hot and it can even burn you. But remove the source of heat and let it revert to its original state and what will happen? It will again become cool. No big deal, that's natural, that's what you expect. But the same thing, in the awareness of the inner being, there is peace. I forget and I lose that and I get into a thousand different reasons that can give me peacelessness. Can you think about a thousand different things that cause you peacelessness? Can you? I'm sure you can. <laughs> it's not a thousand different things that bring peace, but definitely there's a thousand different things that can cause peacelessness. But coming back to the awareness of the self, and that's the first and foremost way in which to experience in a peace. Go back inside. And having experienced that peace in meditation, maybe it's one minute during traffic control, maybe it's 30 minutes when you've been able to have a good long session, maybe it's longer. But that peace that I've experienced inside should then be expressed in my behavior out there, in terms of my actions and relationships with others. And if my actions are something else, and they're not peaceful, then there's a question, well, how effective was my meditation? The first step of meditation, connecting with my inner being, and being peaceful, no matter what. Doesn't matter what may happen, but I have to stay in that awareness of inner peace. 
And if I remember who I am, I'll be able to do that. The second step of meditation, not just to be aware of the inner being, but also to connect with the divine, yoga, union. Not all meditations are concerned about connecting with the divine. There are meditations on nature, there are meditations on sunsets, there are meditations on images, there are meditations on all sorts of things. Sometimes the meditation is simply a method to relax, or sometimes it's to be able to learn to concentrate. So different meditations for different purposes. But the purpose of this meditation is to build up a relationship with the Divine so that I can start experiencing the Divine. And so I go inwards, I connect with who I am, and I experience that inner peace that is there within me as my own natural treasure, original treasure. And it can shift from moment to moment after the meditation. One moment I'm here, and the next moment I'm here. <laughs> It just slips away because we've not been aware of this. So our habit is to think of this identity rather than this identity. And so it takes practice. I have the information, but now I have to practice. And also what's helpful is the right company. If there are people who are going to talk to you about materialistic things, external things, then it's more challenging to be soul conscious. But if you're with others who are talking about the spiritual dimension in meditation and the soul, it's easier to come to that awareness again. And so having come to that awareness of the eternal being that I am, moving my awareness away from the body, then in this awareness of the soul, I'm able to make contact with the divine. Some cultures reject the notion of God, but I don't think that they're present here in this room. Some cultures think of God in many different forms. Some cultures believe that there is a divine, but you can't put a name or form or give specific attributes to that being. It's there and it's just there. But maybe some people feel that the divine is so far away and we as mortal beings, how can we make contact with the Divine? So there's many different things that come up. But Raj Yoga teaches a very, very simple way to connect with the Divine. Because the Divine is the source of power. Think about a battery and the battery having been used and gradually, gradually, gradually becoming discharged. And if you were to recharge the battery, then it would be able to accomplish all the tasks properly. And so linking our thoughts with the Divine, the source of all power, of all energy, I'm able to draw from the Supreme that power within myself. But it's a benign power. It's a benevolent power. It's not aggressive. It's not forceful. It's not egoistic. But it's the power with which I'm able to manage my own thoughts and feelings. It's the power 
with which I can resolve situations. So it includes within itself the power of tolerance, the power of um, cooperation, the power of discernment. All of these powers come through that connection with the Almighty. And so when I believe that there is a being who is a supreme, I won't take time to prove it because I think all of you do believe. How can I connect with the Supreme? By shedding the awareness of this. The Supreme is a being of light. And in order to make contact with that being, I need to let go of this. And just I, the soul, the being of light can learn to fly as fast as a rocket, faster than a rocket, very, very quickly, practically instantly. For example, I'm sitting here, but I think about God, and within that very moment, the connection is made. Or if I think of myself as a soul, how long does it take me to see you as a soul? There's no time lag, is there? The understanding shifts, and with that change of understanding, the relationship also shifts. The quality of connection shifts. An inner power means literally that, the power that I have within to take charge of my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, my interaction, my relationships, and my work. Whenever we have subjects like stress management, anywhere in the world, and we ask people, what is the greatest cause of stress? You know what they tell us? Relationships. Not work, not finance, not home, not any of these things, not the government, <laughs> but it's relationships. Relationships at home, relationships with my neighbors, relationships at work, the whole game of up and down that the soul has been going through in the awareness of the body is all these problems in terms of relationships. And in a way, we have more knowledge in the world, we have more resources in the world, we have everything more and more and more. But yet, of course, souls still feel empty and bankrupt inside. And that's because they haven't connected and rediscovered the treasures that are there within. And so meditation means connecting with the source of might, the almighty authority. And when I do this, simply with the power of thoughts, my thoughts turning to the Supreme, and his thoughts reach me also. And in that way, there's a connection that's been forged. Even when it's relationships with human beings, before you actually speak to somebody, you're already communicating in thoughts. The speech comes later. And sometimes the speech, the words, and I don't mean different language, I mean the same language. You're supposedly speaking the same language, but in fact we're not. We're not understanding each other. We're not communicating. And so you wonder, well, was I clear? 
or is there something wrong with the other person? <laughs> and so let me be very clear, more clear. But it's our thoughts that communicate together first, then the words, then the actions. So the speed of thoughts is faster than the speed of light, than the speed of sound. All of these things follow on. And what we're doing is directing our thoughts to the Supreme. Firstly, it's a question of just using the mind and connecting with God. And then becoming stable in that awareness so that I can experience God's qualities reaching me. And so these two very simple steps for meditation. There's a third aspect which is also very useful, and that is remembering our home, the abode from which we came to play our part here. Is that correct? The soul lives up there in that world of light, but from there, it comes according to time, according to its purity. It takes on a body here and it engages with others. And we are playing a part on the world stage. But our home is that place, that abode. So there are basically three concepts that we're using to meditate. Firstly, the awareness of the soul, the self. Secondly, the recognition of God, the supreme, that point of light. This, of course, is a very stylized image, but the real form of the soul is not visible to the eyes. And the supreme soul, also the same, a being of light, a point of light. And so when I connect with the divine through my thoughts, and I'll just take that up in a few minutes further, but my thoughts connecting with the divine means that I'm beginning to receive from God everything that is within that being. My thoughts connect with you, and there's an exchange. You give me something, I give you something. Same thing. When I remember God, my thoughts connect with the Supreme. And all I am giving is my time, my thoughts, nothing else. And what I'm receiving from the Supreme are all the treasures that God has. The love, the peace, the truth, the power, all of this. And in fact, each one of these qualities in itself is a virtue, but it's also a power. Think about the expressions we use about, say, the power of peace. I'm peaceful myself, well, that's great. But when it's the power of peace, then it's not just me being peaceful, but the vibrations of peace are able to reach out and touch others. So it becomes the power of peace. The same thing with love. Yes, there's love. So when I'm able to receive the love of the Almighty, then I fill myself with this, and not instantly, but within a while, instantly I can feel the love. Instantly I can fill myself with that love. But over a period of time, as I accumulate that energy of love, then I'm also going to be sharing it with others. 
because who I am, what I am, that gets shared willy-nilly, whether I want it or I don't, it gets shared. And so if I'm fearful, when you're in my company, you weren't afraid before, but I'm fearful. And it needs to be a very strong personality not to be affected. And most of us, we do get affected. And then, their power of fear influences my common sense, and I become afraid. And what's going to happen then? Chaos. It's going to get more and more confusing, more and more muddled. But when I communicate with God, and I allow God's influence to work on me, those influences are the highest of all. And I fill myself with the power of peace, the power of love, the power of truth. Truth is a power India was able to gain. Self-sovereignty, freedom, just simply through the power of truth and the power of non-violence. That's it, there were no weapons. So it's incredibly powerful. And so from God, I'm able to receive all these treasures and feel that power growing within myself. And the third aspect in meditation, we are remembering our home, the place of peace, the place where the incorporeal being of light, the soul, lived. How far away is the home? Can you tell me? How far away is it? It's one thought away. No further than that. I have the thought, I want to go home, and I'll be able to experience the home. It's one thought away. Just as a soul doesn't have any physical dimensions, length, width, breadth, height, nothing. In the same way, you can't measure the distance between the soul and the supreme, or between the soul and its home, the supreme abode. And the purpose of experimenting with three different ideas in meditation is because each one brings you different benefit. The practice of being here, being I, I develop my own self-esteem. I know who I am. I know I'm a child of God. the purpose of developing the relationship with the Divine, so that I'm able to receive my inheritance of peace, of prosperity, and good health. Here and now, never mind the future. And the purpose of experimenting with the journey home and experiencing the home is so that I can learn to be an observer, detached. People misunderstand this word, detached. They think it means something cold, something hard. But in fact, detachment means being able to be the master in which I know what I have to do at the time I need to do it. And this means detachment from my role. I'll give you a simple example. Um, let's wait, let's have traffic control, and then we'll get into that.
the example. A parent knows what is good in terms of nutrition and health for the child, in terms of food. And yet, they don't always give, give the child healthy food. Sometimes, because the child is seeing its friends and is seeing that they are eating all the junk food, then the child demands the same for himself. And so what do I do at that moment? As a parent, do I very gently but very firmly explain to the child again why eating between meals is not good, why eating sweets all the time is not good, why eating ice cream is not good. It's fine, but you can't keep having it. It has to be a certain limit in moderation. And so a parent who has real love will give quality time to the child to explain. That's the thing. Anything needs explanation, but it takes time to explain. But otherwise, the child is able to blackmail the parents into giving the child whatever it wants whether it be chocolates and sweets and fizzy drinks that are no good or whether it's other things. And so the point is that within relationships today there's all sorts of other influences that come in which are not very healthy influences but are rather negative influences. But if I remember I'm playing a role and this child is actually God's child. Agree? This child isn't my property. Agree? <laughs> it's correct, isn't it, that another human being cannot be my property. And yet, especially in the relationship of parent and child, sometimes in other relationships too, but especially in the parent-child relationship, there's this possessiveness, my child. And the mother especially, I gave birth. But also the father, this is my creation. And so the thing is that I don't always do what is right for the child when I have this feeling of possessiveness. But if I've spent time in my home, in that world of silence, I come down here to play my role. Then, yes, my role at this moment is to be the parent, but equally, my role is also to be a trustee. This child has been given to me in trust and I have to do what is right for the child, what is best for the child. And so all three experiences of meditation bring their own benefits. And so spending time going deep into the self and experiencing the soul and the qualities of the soul, connecting with God in all relationships. Let me explain that a bit further. Some traditions think that God is the Almighty and is up above somewhere. And so the question of relationship doesn't really come in. But in meditation, what we're doing is developing the relationship of parent and child. The one who's the supreme, the divine, my parent, and I, the child of the divine. And so every child has a right to a very intimate relationship with the parent. And so yes, God is the Almighty, the Supreme, the Highest of all, 
but God is also my parent. And so I can converse with God. I can have a relationship with God. I can have an engagement with God. And as a result of that, I can also receive from God whatever it is that God wants to give me as my right, as my inheritance, the property that God wishes to give me. But also I've been using this word parent, but God plays a dual role. My mother and my father. Not just the patriarch, but mother and father. And in meditation, experiment with this idea. God, my mother, the supreme, but the one who gives me unconditional love, no questions asked. I come to God, and the mother just gives me that love and picks me up and even if I'm dirty, washes me and cleans me so that I become clean and beautiful as I was before. No conditions, no judgment, just unlimited love. But my father, the one who has the inheritance of happiness to give to me, the one who has power that he wants to hand over and let me have also. So meditation doesn't mean just sitting quietly and going blank. You know what will happen if you do that? You fall asleep. <laughs> and sleep is not meditation. <laughs> sleep can be very peaceful, but it's not inner peace. <laughs> it's a very external peace. And so meditation means keeping the mind active, but in a very positive, constructive, creative way taking charge of the mind so that I learn to focus my mind in a very specific area. Do you know how amazing the power of concentration is? Think about lasers and lasers being used in medicine, lasers being used in technology, lasers being used in engineering, lasers being used for all sorts of things. And what is that? Just simply the focusing of light, the concentration of light. When light is concentrated into a laser beam, Many of you know more about it than I do. <laughs> but when that gets concentrated and focused, amazing, wonderful things can happen that could not have happened otherwise. And so my mind, when I learn to focus it in silence, focusing on who am I, focusing it on the Supreme, that connection is incredibly powerful and it's one that's able to transform me. You know how there's a mixture within a human being. There's the devil and the deity, right? Sometimes it's the devil that comes out. <laughs> same person, not talking about two different people, same person. But sometimes it's the devil that comes out. And sometimes it's the divine, the deity, that comes out. For the purpose of transformation is that I should be able to gradually subdue the devil and finally eliminate the devil, at least first subdue it, so that it's not popping its head up again and again. So that yes, there's anger and there's also compassion, there's both. 
but at a time when compassion is needed, if there's anger that erupts, it's not very helpful. And so the connection with the divine and the influence of God's love, so that then those devilish traits are subdued, but also finally eliminated. And that which is good, the divine within the individual, that gets enhanced and empowered. Another very important role, and usually it comes up in life fairly early, and that is teacher. God, my teacher. And to think about all the things God is teaching you every single day. Every single day, new things to learn. And God, my teacher, wanting me to become so wise that I'm able to come to the point where I'm able to move towards truth. And so these four relationships that are very, very essential. And so the awareness of the self for inner peace, the relationship with the divine, for power, because each one of the qualities we receive from God, peace, love, truth, is power that's within, that you use in your life. And the realization of my home, a place where I can be in silence, in stillness, so that then I can experience total rest and purity. Then when I come down, I'm refreshed and recharged. I've built up my inner capacity and inner power. Let me see if you've got any questions or comments. If we could have a microphone here. I know it's not easy to be the first one to ask a question, but your question is probably a question that others have in their mind too. So don't be shy. Morning, sister. Uh, I'm Chong from Malaysia. Um, it's very interesting uh, knowledge today. We get it, and uh, I'm particularly very interested on the thousands of uh, peacelessness that we have. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, during the speech, uh, sister, give I think all the answers is inside there, but. Um, I would like to get some specific advice if we have uh, problems in uh, having a good sleep. How does a meditation, or particularly we're talking about the inner peace and the inner power, can help a person who can't have a good sleep? Thank you. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes people have sleep which is too good and yet sometimes people have trouble having a good sleep and that's the way things are today. Meditation, um, when we finish this then we'll come to you. Um, what's happening in today's world is that there's a huge amount of anxiety and even unconsciously we're carrying that anxiety within ourselves and so sleep gets disturbed and we don't even realize that we're worried about something but it's a state in which the mind is constantly racing and so the mind isn't able to let go 
and be able to sleep. And meditation is very much a help. I'm not saying that if you need medical help, you don't take medical help. But generally, what I've found is that with meditation, people begin to understand what's happening in the mind and they're able to channel their thoughts in a different direction. And when you can start doing that and coming to the awareness of the inner being and God, then in that connection with God, you're able to let go of anxiety and fear. You're able to build up your trust in the Supreme so that you can feel that yes, God is responsible for you. I'm responsible for the quality of my actions in my life, but I don't need to worry about any of that. I know that God is responsible. And so that takes away the pressure and the anxiety and sleep becomes more natural and easy. And the second thing is that at a time when you want to switch off, when you're learning to discipline your mind, you can say, okay, I'm going to deal with this tomorrow. I don't need to think about it now. I'll come back and deal with it when the moment comes. And you're able to let the mind become free. And that also helps. But definitely I would recommend that at night, you read something spiritual and that will channel the mind in the right way and then you spend some time in meditation connecting with God and then the body is going to relax and let go and sleep will be a lot healthier and fresher. Um, there's a gentleman here Om Shanti, first of all, I wanted to thank you for the peace and quiet you gave us just now. Uh, my question is, in your speaking, you spoke of health. What kind of health do you mean? Mental or physical? What kind of? Health. 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 Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, meditation brings both types of health, mental and physical. And again, this is not to say that if you don't need professional help, you don't seek that. Um, we're not here to replace professional help. But I'll give you an example. 80% um, of illness is said to be psychosomatic in nature. And so when I start practicing meditation, it definitely is a huge, huge aid to physical health. Um, and there's many, many different examples of this. Um, there's been a lot of research, scientific research that's gone into this. And you can see all the evidence for this in websites also. And in terms of mental health, Again, where there's a person who's having um, really a psychotic episode, then that's something for the professionals to deal with and meditation won't help in that situation. And so we don't even tell somebody that you should meditate at that moment. But in terms of mental health, in keeping my mind active and alert and clear and strong, um, in a state in which I don't have doubts about myself, doubts about others, a state in which there isn't criticism and negativity. So this is also very much part of mental health. And so meditation deals with all of these issues and gives strength and health in the mind too. Uh, 
Um, my question is that uh, you mentioned about the three steps. So um, how long each step would take in the case that we don't have time? And when we have time, how long should we keep in each step that would give the best benefit? Thank you. Spending time with the self and just going inwards, that's valuable. And at this point, when we're beginning meditation, then just spend a few minutes just letting yourself come to the feeling of who I am and connecting with the inner peace that is there within the soul. And fairly soon, after a few minutes, connect with God, because that's the most important relationship that will develop that will help in life. And so maximum time spent in relationship with God, experiencing the different qualities of God, the different relationships that I've mentioned. I've mentioned just four, but there's more to experiment with later on. And just a few minutes again, to think about your home as being that place of silence, that place of light. So five minutes, 20 minutes, five minutes. That's a very rough formula. And as you go further on, you may want to spend more time just exploring what's going on within the self to be able to sort things out. But at this point, I think that maximum time should be in re developing the relationship with the Divine. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask sometimes even when we know our true self, but when we are playing the roles here, that takes over. Like, uh, we don't want to be angry, we, we all know that, but that takes over. So sometimes it's confusing which role is more important for us. If I think about the soul being the child of God, that is the most important role. And yes, I understand that it's not possible to hold on to that awareness all the time. But in terms of priority, well, that is the most important. And if I hold on to that, then the role that I play as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, as a um, professor, as a teacher, or whatever it may be, all of that is going to work out much, much better if I hold on to that first role. And it's a question of practice, as with anything else the more you pay attention to something and give it priority and practice it, the more you're able to develop that skill. Um, while you're here for a few days, you can totally forget about other roles and just focus on this one role. That's the value of a retreat. You leave other things behind to give yourself the exposure of an atmosphere such as this to be able to develop it so that it becomes a strong foundation that you carry away with you. Um, yes. oh. and that in general, yoga, we have come to know is a physical exercises. But in the Raja Yoga, we do the only meditation. Does it cover the both? Mm. Um, during your timetable here, you'll find that there is time for physical exercise also, whether it's through walking and stretching and things like this. But Raj Yoga is very specifically yoga with the Supreme, Raja, the highest, the Supreme. And Hatha Yoga has its value and its benefit, no doubt about that. But that's not what we teach here. There are other places that specifically teach that. And um, the thinking behind this is important. Um, Hatha Yoga started several thousands of years ago with the awareness that if you discipline your body, 
you come to a point where you can discipline your mind. But meditation, Raj Yoga, works the other way. That if you discipline your mind through understanding, you'll be able to discipline the body. Not in terms of postures, but in terms of what are my eyes doing? What am I saying? What am I eating? What are my hands doing? So that discipline over the physical body comes automatically as a result of meditation of Raj Yoga. Om Chanti. So we say uh, meditation is a two-way communication. I know that I'm trying to establish contact, but how do I know that the Divine is communicating to me too? It won't be in words, but it will be through a feeling. You'll be able to feel God's love reaching you. You'll be able to feel yourself becoming peaceful. You'll be able to feel the inner happiness that's coming from inside, not from anything outside. So God reaching you means God's qualities are reaching you and you're benefiting from that. How do I self-evaluate the performance and of my meditation which goes on? How do I how do I judge myself that yes, I'm doing the right thing and I'm on the right track? Good question. <laughs> when I begin, then I find that my thoughts are going all over the place. And then I can see that my thoughts are now more focused. I'm making connection with the Supreme. And so to be able to evaluate where my thoughts are going, I sit for 10 minutes in meditation. Was it that for nine minutes my thoughts were here and there and I was trying to focus and then I was able to really focus just for one minute or the other way? So A, you'll be able to judge from your concentration. Two, you'll be able to evaluate yourself from the feeling of that connection and how close you feel to the divine. And three, the answer I gave the other brother, um, to what extent am I feeling God's qualities reach me and I'm filling myself with that? And four, to what extent have I changed and not just I say yes I'm definitely not angry anymore I'm very peaceful but as my family say I'm not angry anymore and I'm very peaceful <laughs> okay I think this will have to be the last question because then there's other things uh, this is a question from my college um, Besides the four relationship with the God, a human being also creates many uh, devil acts with the environment, with the nature. So when doing meditation, what should we do to destroy, to kill the greediness? Because uh, that uh, people, uh, human being, uh, destroy and do many harmful things to the nature and the environment. Very relevant question. Um, as I meditate, I'm changing myself and I'm filling myself with peace and contentment so that I simplify my life so I don't need so many things around me because consumerism is what's destroying the environment and so that's one thing. But also, as I become peaceful and non-violent, my diet changes. And so again, this is a major contribution to other living creatures and beings within the world around me. And then thirdly, as I develop my meditation, 
I am able to send healing thoughts of God's love and peace to nature so that I am changing the balance where there has been aggression and violence against nature now I am sending God's light and peace to nature God's love to nature so that nature can be healed and the harmony of nature restored okay last last question <laughs> um, there will be lots of opportunity for you to have questions at another time so I want to, my sister help me translation <laughs> sure من بدأت يعني أتأمل أحس أن علاقتي مع الرب واجد صارت قوية لدرجة أن أحس أن الله يحبني وحقق اللي أبغاه يعني فهل أمشي يعني دائما أقول أن الله يحبني فهل هذا غرور يعني أن أقول أن الله يحبني وحقق أمال يعني she is mentioning that when she started to meditate she started to feel the love of God very much and she started to feel that God is uh, like facilitating the things that she need is this a type she's afraid or she's worried is this a type of ego that's developing within her self <laughs> um, God's love and the awareness of the soul also creates humility because we begin to see all souls as equal so that we can never be superior that all souls are my brothers and so God's love is a very important factor in meditation and I can feel that but it doesn't make us superior to anybody but it makes us more compassionate and humble and yes God's love is able to fulfill everything that I need but the hope is that everybody also has their needs fulfilled with God's love so no ego at all you can check you can check whether because it is very easy once you start with knowledge and meditation you begin to think oh yes I know others don't know but no I know because of God's grace and let me share that so that others can also know very good questions, very perceptive questions indicating that you're really wanting to go further into the subject and so I know that the next few days are going to be very rewarding and fruitful. I'll take your leave now and we'll just have a few moments of meditation before we finish. Is there an announcement? And I realize that with every thought that I create, I create a vibration. An aura. And so I become conscious of my every thought. I become the master of my every thought. And so just check for a moment. What are you thinking right now? What are you entertaining? Just check the thought and just check the feeling. feelings not right then the, just with a switch with a thought turn that feeling around
because all you want to entertain is positive, pure, powerful, purposeful feelings. Shanti. Mm -hmm.